With the rush of traffic growing daily in our city streets, pedestrian crossings are more important than ever. Marking crossings is quite a job, but in Auckland, someone on the city council staff dreamt up this machine for the purpose. A self-propelled road marker. They claim it's unique, and it looks it. Average life of a pedestrian, uh, I mean a crossing, is seven weeks. So the machine and the driver are kept busy, particularly the driver. He has to drive the machine, work the spray, and keep it up to the mark. Putting the wiggle in indication lines that warn motorists there's a crossing ahead is easy for this machine. Thanks to ingenuity, all crossings are kept clearly marked. A protection for both motorists and pedestrians. At One Tree Hill, archers of the Auckland Archery Club gird up their arms and hands for an afternoon sport. First competition is what they call a clout shoot. The bullseye is on the ground and the range is 150 yards for men and 100 yards for women. And now for some target shooting. Archery is a sport that provides recreation for young and old. It's rapidly becoming popular in New Zealand, and some of our archers are becoming real experts. In a recent international contest, a New Zealander scored the highest aggregate marks. The sport calls for keen eyes, steady hands, and strong arms. It takes a 40-pound pull to release an arrow from one of these bows. Final competition is a William Tell shoot at an apple on the head of a dummy. They don't try the real thing because it's too easy to miss. To look after the teeth of the children in the many small schools of the Thames area, two army dental caravans have been converted into mobile clinics for our school dental service. Here in the forward compartment are all the usual instruments and equipment of a permanent clinic, but everything's firmly fixed down for travelling over rough roads. In the rear compartment, the most important thing is the sterilizer for the instruments. Where power is available, electricity does the heating. But in many places where this clinic will go, there's no power. So the heating is done by compressed gas, which is stored in cylinders in the clinic. With each unit goes a dental nurse who travels by car while the clinic is towed from school to school. All this to help ensure good teeth in young New Zealanders everywhere. Metal pours from a furnace, the first step in the making of an electric washing machine. Behind the simplicity of the washing machine lies the skill of the workers, the knowledge of engineers and draftsmen. This Auckland factory is working constantly to meet the enormous and ever-growing demand for washing machines. Once regarded as a luxury, the washing machine is rapidly becoming a necessity. Parts of the machine are cast in a mould, but the bowl itself, that will soon hold shirts and napkins and undies, is cut from sheet metal. By far the greatest part of the materials used are local. Only the small electric motor is imported. This factory is one of the largest producers of washing machines in the British Empire, and the quality of the product measures up to the highest standards. The washing machine itself receives a washing on the way to the assembly line. The bowl is immersed in a great bath of acid to remove impurities and prepare it for enamelling.
into the oven for a baking to dry the enamel and make the bowls thoroughly durable and resistant. Another precision job is the machining of the parts. And here, as elsewhere, fresh ideas and constant improvements are embodied in new designs. The factory turns out several different models, with production going up all the time. Forty machines a day come off the line. Forty housewives' dreams coming true every day. They cost less than 50 pounds each. That's cheaper than the imported article, an answer to the people who talk about our economic industries. If you can afford one, and if you have a home to put it in, the washing machine can produce the weary, back-aching hours of a Monday morning's laundry to the work of just a few minutes. <laughs> 